Hello friends and welcome to my official Notion dashboard tour. And before you stop me, I know it's February, but oftentimes when a new year rolls around, I find it a cluttered space to try and plan in January. And it typically does take me about a month to settle into a routine after the holidays. And so as a result, February for me is a great time to dig into my planning and cast aside any goals that may have been impulsive. So if you are interested in following along on my Notion tour and seeing how I plan out my goal setting and task management system, then please just keep on watching. <sighs> so one thing I know for sure, one of two things is gonna happen when you finish watching this video. Either one, you're gonna walk away saying, wow, what a powerful organizational system and I can't wait to see how it'll change my life. Or you're gonna walk away thinking, wow, that's a really powerful organizational system and this girl kind of went off the deep end trying to tame the beast. The purpose of this video is not to amp you up in the midst of a pandemic, but rather to instill some calmness and certainty in what you can control rather than what you cannot control. It's not lost on me that planning for the future right now is insanely daunting, it's unpredictable and emotional. So with that said, I want to introduce you to a system that has had my back the last few months. This system has allowed me to track my well-being, my habits, and my personal goals. I've taken great care and a lot of time researching and designing it to fit my needs. And while it is still a work in progress, it is something that brings me a sense of calm and great joy when I do use it. Maybe you can design something or adapt what I've designed and other creators have designed into something that works for you. Let's just dive right into the Notion tour here. Okay, so welcome to my digital brain, which is my Notion workspace. I discovered Notion in early October, and I quite literally went for a massive deep dive into its functions and features. So you may be asking, what is Notion? It has been described before as Google Suite on steroids. It pulls functionality from Trello, Asana, Monday, Todoist, and all the other productivity software that you may already be using for organizational purposes. So I have adapted most of my Notion templates from various creators like Thomas Frank and Jules Acri to suit my needs. I will be providing some public templates with pages that I've added my own spin to. They will be linked in the description box below, so make sure you check those out. Please note that this is largely, largely inspired by Jules Acri. She is the YouTuber who first introduced me uh, via her video tour of Notion and she showed me all that it can offer. So let's just talk quickly about Notion and why creatively it's very fulfilling. So this is kind of what it looks like at a glance. You can make Notion as simple or as extravagant as you want. The three dots in the top right hand corner allow you to customize the page. There are three different font styles that you can choose from. I typically gravitate towards the default because it is easiest to read in my opinion. Also usually gravitate towards small text, but you can toggle these on and off if you want larger text. There's also a uh, full width. So if you want larger margins, you can toggle this off, but I usually leave it on. Each page allows you to add an icon of your choice. You can use an emoji or you can upload one from the web. And then there's also cover images, which allow you to personalize your page even more. You can upload your own image or you can link to an image on the internet or find a stock image using Unsplash here. So here you can see I have a header called at a glance. This just has today's date and time. It also has a quote that I really love, the weather for where I am. I also have a widget that shows a view of my Google Calendar at a glance. Essentially, Notion allows you to create endless pages within pages. So all of these links here are pages, and within those pages you can create even more pages. My dashboard list are typically pages that are productivity and task related. I have a personal header which contains areas of my life like gratitude practices, journaling, and fun, more personal stuff. I have a bunch of lists on the far right. I also have my Spotify playlist that I typically listen to in the mornings while having my morning coffee here. I have documentation that includes health records and taxes. And then on the far right, I have my growth list, which contains my workout tracker, any courses I'm taking, book notes, etc. I have some more words that I live by. These are just gentle reminders when I start to get stressed. And then I also have images and a little gif here. I do have a work list as well, but in the interest of privacy, I'm not going to be showing those today. Let's get into some of my favorite most used pages. I am diving off the deep end with my task manager here. So if you are more interested in simplicity, skip ahead to the mark I've indicated on the screen, please. All right. 
So pardon my French, but this is my getting shit done dashboard. It is originally coined by David Allen. It is called the getting things done dashboard. Essentially, it's his method of scheduling and organizing tasks. So the way it works is it is a task manager with many at a glance views of your upcoming tasks. The way I've set this up is with one big master table that contains all of my tasks. And then essentially what this page does is filters these tasks in different ways. So we'll start with the first section, which is called the inbox. It's essentially a dumping ground for tasks that have come into your life. I will input new tasks here. As you can see, I have one on the go, and then I will assign it a database. If it has a parent project, I will assign that as well. I'll give it a due date, check whether or not it's high priority, I will give context, whether it's high energy, low energy, or an errand. Often I'll give a duration for the task. This one may take 45 minutes. I'll select a status, and then there are also notes. And then once I'm done filling in all the information, I will capture the task. So typically what will happen throughout the day is I'll think of a task that I need to do. I will quickly jot it down here and leave this. Then I'll come back later and fill in the nitty gritty details and then capture it when I'm ready. So you've heard me say the word capture a few times now. And what capturing does is file the task away where it belongs in the various views I've set up below. Capturing does not delete the task, let me be clear, but rather it sorts it depending on the date that you've set. So as a result, what matters most when using this dashboard is making sure that you select a date before capturing it. If you capture a task without setting a date, it will not show up in the views below and you'll kind of lose the task. Okay, so if you scroll down, I do have an overdue view in here, but I'm gonna come back to this in a minute. The view that I wanna talk about right now is the today view. So this helps me look at what's on my plate for the day and I also have it sorted by priority. So the items due today that are marked as high priority will appear first. And then I have a this week view. So anything with a green scheduled status that you'll see here means that I have scheduled that task into my Google Calendar and I no longer have to worry about it. Hopping back up to the overdue view, this will make a little bit more sense. Anything that I miss is always shown in my overdue view. I find this view is absolutely essential in jogging my memory and not forgetting things. Ideally, I don't want anything landing in here, but it does happen. If I find an item that keeps ending up in the overdue table, sometimes what I'll do is I'll reassess, you know, do I have time to complete that task? Is there anything I can do differently in my approach to that task? And I'll sometimes do what I like to call bumping. This is when I select the bump status and clear the date. So I'll show you what that looks like. So say I wanted to film a trailer for my YouTube channel. This is something I wanted to do. I realized that, you know, after a while, it's not getting done. Even though I schedule it, it ends up back in my overdue table. Uh, what I'll often do is I'll click bumped and then I will clear the date so that essentially it will get off of my plate for this week, but it will still be captured below in my upcoming table, which I'm about to show you next. So I'll clear the date and you'll see that it disappears. If you scroll down now, this upcoming view will show me anything coming up in the next month, excluding this week, so that I don't have duplicates from this week showing up in upcoming. This also captures any task that I've marked as bumped and removed the date. This way, when I look ahead at what's on my radar, I can reschedule these bumped tasks as needed according to what fits into my schedule. I have a quick view of my Google Calendar on the left here. If you scroll down from there, I also have a hidden toggle with a view of my completed tasks. And these have different views over the past week, 30 days, or a year. As you can imagine, there are so many different ways to filter these tables depending on what you prioritize. Some people might want a view that shows only high priority tasks, or perhaps you even wanna see tasks that are under 30 minutes in duration, things that you can quickly do first thing in the morning and they won't take very long. You can use these table filters to create such robust systems that show what you want to see at a glance. And that is why Notion is so powerful. Okay, so let's get out of my GSD dashboard and get into the more fun goal setting for the year. I'm gonna take you into my yearly planning dashboard. You might wonder, how might this be different than my GSD dashboard? And here is how I'll explain it. So my getting shit done dashboard is my all things week to week task manager. It allows me to manage things on the fly and it's designed for capturing tasks as life happens. My yearly planning dashboard is meant for high level planning, 
in alignment with my goals that I've set up for the year. Here is where I'll think hard about what I want to focus on this year. In 2021, for example, we'll visit that year. My word for the year I kept coming back to was community. I felt as though, especially during a pandemic and moving across the country, nurturing a sense of community is what kept my spirits high during my lows. All right, so that brings us to our word of the year for 2022. The word that I've chosen is alignment. I want everything, both small and big, to align with my values and with my true self. Now that I've chosen my word, this can help to inform the goals that I set for myself this year. So here below, you can see I've made a table with all of my goals. I've assigned quarters in which I would like to complete this goal. I've also assigned the goals status. I've indicated whether it's a personal or a professional goal. I have any relevant notes written here. I will go into more detail on this column here and how it populates, but essentially any tasks in this column are tasks that I've created that will support the pursuit of this goal. So now that I've assigned quarters for my yearly goals, I can actually go into each quarter here and break down in which months I want to work towards the goals. So you can see here that I have a block. This is actually a synced block so that when I go into the month, I can actually see my Q1 top priorities. It is supposed to be top three, but I've added a few more as you can see. There are some nice to haves here. If we go into January, this is the same block that you saw in my quarterly view. If I, for example, want to get back into my four to five times a week exercise routine, I will break that down into a smaller sub goal or sub task. So I know in order to hit that goal, I want to coordinate an energy exchange with, with a bar studio when I get to Kelowna. And then I also want to complete one hustle challenge. Hustle is my online Pilates studio. These two tasks directly support attaining my goal of getting back into a regular exercising schedule. And this honestly just gets more and more granular. When you scroll down, you can actually see that I have weekly planning views as well. These are some of the stuff that you've already seen in my GSD dashboard. But say I also want to reach out and coordinate the energy exchange. What you can do is you can drag and drop this into the task manager, but I actually like to make a duplicate because I want to keep this view here and be able to tick it off at the end of the month. So I'm just gonna duplicate this, I'm gonna drag it down into my task manager. And then I also will fill in all of the nitty gritty details here. Go into my GSD dashboard, you will see that that task that directly supports my goal has been filed into here as well and I just need to capture it, either here or back in my yearly planning, whatever works. Okay, let's move on to something a little bit more fun. My content map is essentially for my blog and my YouTube channel. We're gonna go into my gratitude reflections. So this is where I keep my gratitude practices. Each morning, I like to start my day by writing down what I'm grateful for. Sometimes I still prefer writing them by hand, but this has been a time saver for me lately and it's just something that I've settled into in my routine. I can pop it open fill in the date. I'll set my mood because oftentimes I like to track my mood day in, day out, see what the common theme is. Day I am happy. <laughs> and then what I'll also do is I'll set a reminder. I'll turn on the time so that I have a reminder to come back to this page for my evening assessment. And then I will set the reminder to be at the time of the event. And I have some templates set up here, so I will click the gratitude assessment. As you can see, I have an AM assessment that I'll fill out in the morning and then a PM assessment. Let's hop into self-care. I typically only visit this page once or twice a year. It's just a space to write out my ideal mornings and evenings. And now we're gonna go into the dashboard that Matt and I share. So it's kind of a little mini dashboard that I've created for us. We've only just started living together in the last year or so. Plus Matt doesn't personally use Notion other than for this specific dashboard. I hope to flesh it out a little bit more, but for now I keep any packing lists, um, any shared finances. I have a link to my recipes here that he might want to access. Um, and then I have any tasks that are shared between us, a link to our shared Google calendar, and I've added a photo of us in Kelowna. And then under the growth section, I actually have, this is directly adapted from Jules Acre. It's a make it hot date list. It just contains date ideas and getaways that we'd like to try as a couple. The brain dump is really just a blank page with bullet points and I dump anything and everything that comes to my brain that I need to file away later. I have a personal journal that I'm not gonna open because it has all of my personal journal entries. Over on the right hand side, we have my recipe list. 
I will touch on this quickly. Recently moved my recipe list over from Trello because Notion does offer a similar Kanban style board. I'm testing out this page still, which is why I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but really everything is divided based on category. So we have breakfast, sides and snacks, salads, soups, entrees, desserts, drinks, seasoning and spice mixes. Wow, I can't speak. Uh, salad dressings, dips and sauces. I also have some tags like when something is a favorite so I can find it more easily. If you're curious as to what I'm testing, it is the add to grocery list checkbox. So when I check this, the idea is that any of the ingredients down below will be automatically added to a shopping list. Uh, so if I go here, then you will see that all of the ingredients from the Thai cauliflower bites that I just added to my grocery list will now appear here. So I've sorted this all by aisle so that it makes the shopping process a bit easier. I will share the preliminary template, but not with the ingredient testing I'm doing just yet. I need to make sure it's finessed before releasing it. So then I have a wish list and a gift list. The wish list, I really recommend going and visiting Jules Acres. She has a template set up and this is essentially just pulled from hers. The gift list just has a list of gifts that I want to give to friends and family. So I'm not going to open it because I know some of them watch this. This is my watch list and I'll briefly touch on this. But again, Jules Acre, check her out. This is her template. She has a great tour on her channel of this page and mine is adapted directly from hers. The only things that I've finagled are that my list includes both TV shows and film and hers only contained shows. These are things that are in progress or upcoming or not started or I stopped watching. And then once I've watched something, I give it a rating, give it stars, um, and then I write down my impression of the show or film. My bucket list. I will actually show you this one. As of now, it's just a simple checklist. The thing I really love about this is that once I've actually done something, for example, I did learn to sail this summer. So that was very exciting. And I created a little sub page here. And then I essentially wrote down everything about this experience, who I did it with, what the date was, where it was, kind of an overview paragraph, some photos of the experience. And then I also wrote down any notes and things that I learned along the way. My family has a checklist that is private under documentation. Uh, these are all private things, obviously, but you can be really creative with how you set these up. This list I haven't really fleshed out yet, but it's basically just a workout tracker. I will show you my reading list. So this is essentially the exact same as the to watch list, except it is for books. Uh, and that's basically it guys, that's my dashboard. Thanks to so many creators, I've been able to create an adapted approach to Notion. And I'm happy to share the pages that I've created as public templates below in the description box if you wanna check those out. I believe that having a system to rely on when you can't necessarily manage all the tasks yourself, I believe that's key to driving success in your personal goals and in maintaining a balance in your life. Having the system brings peace of mind that even if your brain forgets, your system won't. So thanks so much for watching and check out the description box below and until next time.